Studio 6 Welcome to Think, Design, Provoke, the podcast. An intimate space where every week you receive inspiration about the fascinating world of interior design and all the benefits and effects in your lifestyle. My name is Francesca, and we will create meaningful conversations to unveil the enigmatic perception of interior design as a discipline that simply focuses on aesthetics. We will expose everything from interiors to its relationship to architecture, surroundings, history, and culture. We will challenge the misconception of interior spaces confined in architectural boundaries. We will understand that interior spaces provide the setting for human activity and are created to fulfill human desires and needs where sensory pleasures and engagement are celebrated. That is the built environment, the connection between individuals, physical spaces, experience, emotions, and its social consequences. I am your host, and I invite you to join the design conversations that will elevate your consciousness about interiors. Consciousness that will embrace the beautiful possibilities of manifesting all your senses in your space. Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 11 of Think, Design, Provoke, the podcast. I am excited to be here connecting with you on another Friday of valuable design conversations. So, happy Friday. This podcast is presented by Studio Chess Interior Architecture Design Studio. In this 11th episode, we are going to converse about the relevance of sustainability in interior design. All interior design professionals have a social and moral responsibility to the health, safety, and welfare of their clients. We must provide ongoing acknowledgement and care for the most consistent, supportive, and venerable of our long-term clients, planet Earth. Our climate can be affected by both man-made and natural events. Some are due to change in the sun's activity or large volcanic eruptions. However, since the 1800s, human activities have been a driver of change, primarily due to the burning of fossil fuels like coal, oil, and gas. The main greenhouse gases that are causing this include carbon dioxide and methane. Sustainability, eco-friendly, green, organic, environmentally friendly, all those terms interrelate in the intent of having a better quality of life. And a better quality of life is manifested through the food that we eat, the products we use in our hair, the lotions we use in our facial care, the scents we choose for our vehicles or homes, and yes, the spaces we inhabit. On different scales, sustainability aims to preserve our resources, using what is best to sustain human existence on the planet in the most enjoyable and responsible way. Sustainable design is an increasingly important aspect of interior design. Sustainability in interiors is very relevant because quality of life and the diversity of Earth's ecosystems cannot be maintained without it. It is about the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet theirs. In order to increase the health and comfort of people, there are a wide range of concerns that a sustainable design approach considers. Energy conservation, the wise use of materials, adaptive reuse, indoor air quality, recycling, reuse, and other strategies are considered to achieve a balance between the consumption of environmental resources and the renewal of those resources. Although architects address many sustainable design issues during the design of a building, there are several steps we designers can take to minimize the environmental impact of interior build-out. Let's talk energy conservation. Two of the most important categories to reduce energy consumption is electricity usage and plumbing. Reducing power required for lighting can be achieved by using task ambient systems or by other means utilizing daylighting. 
the use of LEDs to emit light in a specific direction reduces the need for reflectors and diffusers that can trap the light. This feature makes LEDs more efficient. High reflective finishes help to improve the brightness provided by daylighting. Utilization of appliances and equipment that are energy efficient is ideal. You see this often in commercial spaces, which use automatic occupancy lighting controls in spaces that are not regularly occupied, such as copy rooms, storage rooms, or restrooms. From a plumbing point of view, a well-designed plumbing system guarantees consistent water pressure, which eliminates the necessity for multiple pumping stages, thus saving energy. The proper plumbing installation achieves efficient water distribution and minimizes the need for excessive pumping. Also, the use of low flow fixtures definitely help to reduce water consumption, resulting in energy savings. What about wise use of materials? Sustainable and responsibly sourced materials are an important way to ensure a space makes a minimal impact when it comes to climate change. From a spatial standpoint, the use of existing structural and reclaimed materials, including wood, stone, and steel, is a successful pattern for sustainability. Also promoting materials that emit the fewest greenhouse gas emissions throughout their lifespan, meaning their extraction, production, construction, maintenance, and disposal can dramatically minimize the environmental impact. Considering chemical composition, durability, and renewability is imperative. Materials like wood, bamboo, cork, stone, glass, organic cotton, and wool are superior options for use in a sustainable interior. Secondhand furniture, refurbished or upcycled, is a great practice to avoid the waste of good material. If you are not a person that loves the secondhand option, there are plenty of furniture companies with a focus on sustainability and best practices where you can definitely find an incredible amount of options for residential or commercial furnishing purposes. For example, there are wall coverings made of non-woven PVC free source paper and non-toxic water-based inks to textiles that are hand-woven with natural fibers like wool, organic cotton, or hemp. All these materials help lessen the carbon footprint of humans to our environment, which means changing how you approach and participate in activities that produce greenhouse gases. The more natural and renewable materials we use, the more we are creating opportunities to maintain a harmonious relation between humans and the environment, supporting present and future generations. Indoor air quality is not less important. Maintaining health is an important aspect of sustainable design. And one of the basic requirements of health is good indoor air quality. The quality of indoor air affects people's sense of well-being and can affect absenteeism, productivity, creativity, and motivation. Indoor air contaminants can be broadly classified into two groups chemical contaminants and biological contaminants. Chemical contaminants include things such as volatile organic compounds, best known as VOCs, tobacco smoke, and many others, while biological contaminants include mold, pollen, bacteria, and viruses. Two contaminants that you have probably heard about constantly are VOCs and formaldehyde. VOCs are chemicals that contain carbon and hydrogen and that vaporize at room temperature and pressure. They are found in many indoor sources in building materials and common household products like paint, stains, adhesives, sealants, MDF furniture, upholstery, and carpeting. Formaldehyde is a colorless gas with a pungent odor. It is used in the preparation of the resins and adhesives most commonly found in particle board, 
wall paneling, carpet adhesives, and other glues in the construction and furnishings industry. Even in hair products, formaldehyde is designated as a probable human carcinogen and has irritant effects on the eyes and respiratory tract. I think it is a great idea to avoid those, don't you think? <laughs> Let's continue. I am a huge fan of adaptive reuse projects, which refers to the process of reusing an existing building or a space for a purpose other than which it was originally built or designed for. For example, converting an old gas station into a restaurant, or an old train station into an office space, or a barn into a home. In many cities and countrysides, you see abandoned buildings, and this approach offers a way to breathe new life into empty historic structures. Here are three reasons why adaptive reuse is important and how it relates to sustainability. First, it slows urban sprawl. Urban sprawl means the spreading of urban developments on undeveloped land near a more or less densely populated city. When builders search for new construction sites, they most often choose land further outside of a city center since the land within a city is usually claimed by old buildings or more expensive real estate. This fuels the process of urban sprawl, contributing to air pollution and other environmental impacts, higher infrastructure costs, and social isolation. Adaptive reuse offers a counter to urban sprawl. Second, it maintains cultural heritage. In communities with historic architecture, adaptive reuse is a form of historic preservation. It restores culturally significant sites that will otherwise be left to decay or be demolished to make room for new buildings or parking lots. Thirdly, it creates a new community beacon. Adaptive reuse approach is functional and often incredibly beautiful. For example, the High Line in New York City is an elevated linear park, greenway, and a rail trail created on a former New York Central Railroad spur on the west side of Manhattan. Believe it or not, this place was once destined for demolition. Luckily, the community rallied together to repurpose it instead, creating the park you see today for everyone to enjoy. It has since become a global inspiration for cities to transform unused industrial zones into dynamic public spaces. The Highland is one of my favorite zones in New York City. I love the artsy, urban and natural setting and how they all coexist purposefully and artfully. While walking through the High Line, I feel part of a vibrant community that recognizes their full potential. A community that celebrates their heritage, their location, and their history. To me, it has a lot of meaning, charm, and yes, a positive sustainability impact. Seeing the transformation of a space that was abandoned and unused for so many years transformed into a revitalized park that is now enjoyed by the local community and visitors from all over the world is precious to me. The social interaction that takes place there, the physical activities, the total enhancement of livability make the Highland a successful project and a must-see place in the Big Apple. If you have the opportunity, go to New York and not only see it, just enjoy it. Immerse yourself in that beautiful adaptive reuse project. Recycling and reuse of materials and products is an important part of the life cycle of an interior space or building. As many materials as possible should be recycled into other products or reused for their original purpose. In turn, new spaces and buildings should incorporate as many recycled and previously used materials as possible to provide a market for those products. Ideally, all materials should be durable, biodegradable, or recyclable. Let me tell you about this project. 
Hotel Toronto in Canada is another example of sustainable and responsibly sourced materials project that ensures minimal impact to the environment. Existing structural and reclaimed materials, including timber, driftwood, local limestone, and native plants were used across the interiors of the building from bedrooms to restaurants, the reception, and other public areas. The hotel is not only environmentally friendly, it is beautiful. The preservation of those resources had a positive impact on the levels that represent the pillars of sustainability, which are human, social, economic, and environmental. This project celebrates the beauty of the city's natural environment inspired by Lake Ontario. It also recognizes a community that is anchored by wellness and resiliency. The Hotel Toronto project gave the opportunity to local businesses a chance to collaborate and be a part of the transformation of this hotel through a local woodworking studio in reclaimed furnishings, giving that sense of belonging to the community through the furnishings of this hotel. As you see, sustainability is a whole ecosystem that supports the main four pillars through interior design interventions. Many people think that it is much easier to be unsustainable, especially people or vendors that do not make any profits with a sustainable approach. It is true that it requires less time and research to buy or develop custom solutions that are not environmentally friendly. However, the design, construction, and furnishing industries, among many other disciplines, can no longer afford the luxury of ignoring the environmental impact caused by unsustainable activities. There are studies conducted by U.S. Environmental Protection Agency that show Americans throw out 12 million tons of furniture every year. Imagine that. So many of these pieces contain multiple different materials and very few are recycled. Hey, that's scary. You already know my goal as a designer. Protect public health, life safety, and well-being through a valuable experience to the user. Sustainable interior design creates healthier indoor spaces by using the best practices and products that are free of harmful chemicals and allergens. I believe in the use of renewable resources that are abundant in nature and can be replenished over time, like trees that fall and need to be removed just to give you a quick example. A cyclical system. A tree is born, it lives, it dies, and it is returned to support new life. As always, my intention is to create awareness and provide food for thought about the influence of design in your life on a daily basis, and remind you that the benefits of interior design goes beyond aesthetics. Yes, it goes beyond a pretty table and way beyond the expensive sofa or the cliche color of the year. If you feel identified and connected with this podcast, please join the Design Conversations and invite your friends and family to be part of our community. I will be here every Friday to chat with you about interesting topics within the fascinating interior design world. If there is a specific topic that you want me to discuss, or if you have any questions, please feel free to DM me through Instagram or Facebook. Also, you can send me an email at thinkdesignprovoke at gmail.com. Please follow me on my social media platforms at Studio Chess to continue the design conversation. In the episode notes, I am including the contact links for your reference, also the Highline and Hotel Toronto links so you can enjoy it for yourself. If you find value in this content, please share this episode in your social media or chats, and remember to leave me a review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite audio platform. Thank you for your attention and for being on the other side. It is my absolute pleasure to be here with you. I'll chat with you next Friday. And remember, everything in the built environment is by design and you are part of it. Ciao, ciao.